Okay, so in this video, we're gonna start with goniometry for shoulder abduction. Okay, so the patient is supine and the patient position is palm up because in order to fully abduct, we need to be extra, fully externally rotated. So if you're internally rotated or even in neutral and you try to abduct, you're only gonna go so far because the greater tubercle is hitting the acromion process. But once we externally rotate and then we abduct, that ensures that that greater tubercle is gonna clear the acromion process and we can get full range. So we're gonna say, turn your palm up to the ceiling and I'm gonna have you slide this arm out towards your side, up towards your ear, kind of like you're making a snow angel. And you'll notice the pillow's in the way. So that's not allowed. So bring your arm back down. So if you're, if you're using a pillow, that's fine. Just move it over. So her head is still supported, but the pillow's not going to impede her range of motion. The other thing is when you're, typically I would stand here, um, just make sure you're not standing so close that when she abducts, she's um, accidentally touching your body because it's, it's awkward. Um, okay, so same thing. All right, common compensation that we see is someone who like lifts off of the table and doesn't keep that motion in the pure frontal plane. Another compensation that we see is um, side bending the neck toward like toward the shoulder and potentially side bending the trunk away, although that's harder to do when you're supine. Okay, so abduction occurs in the frontal plane, which means my goniometer has to be moving in the frontal plane as well. The um, fulcrum goes right over the axis of motion, so that's gonna be like pretty much right over the armpit. And the stationary arm is gonna be lined up with, it's gonna be anterior to the midline of the sternum. So from where you are, if you stand at the head of the bed, that's the best place to stand to see the orientation of her sternum, which isn't necessarily parallel with the side of the bed. So something for me to keep in mind as I'm orienting my, do you see the same thing? That her sternum's a little bit like this and mm -hmm. not? Okay. Um, but we can't do this. We're not gonna palpate this someone's sternum. We're not gonna put our hand there. We're gonna keep our hands free of this area. So I'm locating, putting the fulcrum basically right over the armpit. I'm making sure that this is parallel with that anterior midline of the sternum. And this time the moving arm is gonna be lined up with the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And so I'm getting like 151, 152 degrees of abduction. Is that pillow in the way? Do you think I didn't move it over enough? No, I can't. I just slept funny. Okay. Bring it back down. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention before we move over to MMT. No, I think. Oh, I should mention one other thing. Um, one of the mistakes we commonly see is you'll have you'll the, the student will have someone abduct perfectly, and then all of a sudden they're down here and they're measuring flexion because this goniometer is happening in the sat moving in the sagittal plane, it's a measurement of flexion. So just remember, because the end range of flexion looks very much like abduction, although abduction, the, the palm is facing up to the ceiling and flexion, their palm is facing, uh, like their pinkies up to the ceiling. So just make sure that your goniometer is in the plane that you are measuring. Okay, thank you. So let's hop over here onto this wooden chair. We're gonna do some manual muscle testing. So we'll measure the same side. So I'm gonna have you, I'll stand in front of her to give her cues. I'm gonna have you bring that arm, palm facing the floor, out to the side, just up to here. Good, so again, while I talk, you know, hold your arm out there. So again, to earn a three, just like with shoulder flexion, abduction, we don't expect them to go through their full range against gravity, just to 90. So if she gets to 90 against gravity, she's earned her three. If she goes more than half, but not all the way, that's a three minus. If she goes, um, Part of the way but not even half that's a two plus but she went through her full 90 so my resistance is going to be distal humerus just proximal to the elbow and my stabilization is on the contralateral shoulder on the top give good stabilization it's not just there for show you really want to give strong stabilization the reason the stabilization is on the other side of the spine is so that when i push there's a um, an equal force on the opposite side. Okay, so don't let me push you down, stay strong. So four and five, good. And then if she couldn't move through that partial range against gravity, which was our, our two range, 
and I'm palpating for a one and a zero, then instead of being anterior for shoulder flexors, now I just move lateral because I'm trying to capture the abductors. And if I had her try to bring her arm out to the side, but she couldn't do it, but I'm feeling something, I would give her a one and nothing, I would give her a zero. That's it.